Welcome back to another episode of the 2JZ RX7 Drift Build Series. I'm super excited for today's video because I'm announcing my partnership with Vibrant Performance for the 2023 drift season. Now, if you don't know what Vibrant Performance is, they make tons of automotive fabrication components from intercooler piping to exhaust, fittings and lines. They make tons of parts that I'm going to be putting on this build. And the reason I chose Vibrant Performance is because they're a top tier company. And I wanted a company to work with that could match the level of quality I'm trying to achieve with this 2JZ RX7 build. Now, full disclosure, I've never even done any exhaust or intercooler fabrication myself. On the old version of this car with the 302, my brother did all of the exhaust fabrication. This video is going to be really neat for me because I get to show you a super unique method in fabricating these parts that you probably haven't seen before. And to me, this is the easiest method as a brand new fabricator. So when I say unique method of fabrication, this is kind of what I'm talking about. And it's really just using 3D printing and CAD in order to create a mock-up that's perfect so that I can transition that into a final stainless steel product. And I started with this four inch tube. I just went to Vibrant's website um, got all the center line radiuses, drew it all in CAD, and then started piecing some things together. So this is the start of the downpipe. I even went on to Garrett's website and got their flange dimensions so that I could make this a perfect fit onto my turbo housing and then fit up onto the downpipe. These tools here are for marking the tube in a perfect, like perpendicular line. So I basically just set this on the tube and then I can hold it and scribe a line and mark my three points on the tube so I can orient it all perfect and get everything tangent the way I want it. So those are pretty helpful in various sizes. Um, I've also made this. So this is in the six inch center line radius and it will allow me to set this up on a you know piece of bent tube that Vibrant already sells so I can mark it exactly where I want at the different angles. So let's take all this over to the car and start piecing it together. So this is where it sits. I've got a little bit of clearance here with the valve cover and I've got a four inch OD, four inch centerline radius here and the other two are six inch centerline. So I'll show you which pipes come like that from Vibrant, but um, I think this is a pretty good fit, honestly, for four inch, that's quite a bit of room down there. I've also got this Vibrant flex coupling that I printed and I'm gonna go under the car and see if I can fit that down there too. So this is the space I've got to work with, and it looks like this is gonna be pretty decent. It's gonna take a little fit up by hand once I actually switch to stainless steel, but plenty of room for that. Now that the 3D printed mock-up is complete, I've got all my dimensions, I've got all my centerline radiuses known, I can basically copy this and transition to stainless steel. So I'm gonna start working on this piece here, which is my three inch to four inch transition onto my Garrett V-band flange. And I designed this heat sink here to make this process a little bit better, make sure that I can clamp my V-band flange up and keep everything flat. And this also allows me to clamp it into my chuck on my rotary positioner. So we finished the three to four inch transition. So I took that off of my template. I've got a six inch centerline radius, 45 degree bend here and here. And I've got my stainless J bend from Vibrant. And I know that this side is longer. So I'm gonna match it up with this side. It looks like it's about the same length or more, which is what we need. So 
In order to do the next piece on down the downpipe, I'm going to steal it off of this side. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a steel rule and line it up. And as soon as it starts to bend, that's where I'll mark my tangent line so you can find the tangent at the end of the curve. And then I'll use my little jig here in order to get my 45 degree line perfect. And we should be able to get this second one tacked in. All right, so that first piece is all tacked in and not gonna lie, it's kind of shitty. It's a larger diameter than the vibrant stuff. So the fitment is not that great. And that three to four is just from some no name company. And it was significantly shorter than the vibrant transition, which is kind of what I needed with my low clearance against the valve cover. So I took a gamble and it uh, doesn't fit great. I could grind some off the backside to a lower diameter, but trying to keep squareness and flatness with everything. I'm struggling as it is, so I'm just gonna leave it and see how it welds. Um, off camera, I ended up cutting two more pieces of that 3D printed prototype, and I marked it with my centerline marking 3D printed jigs that I was showing earlier. And this is just exactly what that 3D printed piece is, so it ended up fitting up pretty good. So right now I'm just gonna tack these up and see how everything else fits. This isn't really too bad. It's my first time actually welding stainless other than a coupon or two. So it's uh, pretty decent. I was pretty unhappy with the fit up of this, but you know, once I welded it, it doesn't look as bad as I thought. So um, I do have this bellows ply that needs to go down on the bottom of the downpipe onto a 45, but that takes up a lot of real estate. So before I do that, I wanna ensure that I have enough room for this two inch uh, wastegate pipe to come down there uh, instead of going up into the hood and instead of going into the down pipe I'm just going to run my own little individual screamer pipe that goes below the frame so it's not shooting flames on anything important but I have such little room that I think I might actually just weld this to the down pipe on the side and then incorporate another bellow up here so everything can move and nothing will crack so fast forward just a tad, I got the wastegate V-band welded and I basically just used my 3D printed mock-up to get this thing where I want it. And it now matches kind of the contour of the downpipe and it goes all the way down to the bottom. So I'm gonna probably just finish welding this so that I can uh, cut this bottom off where I need and kick it out back towards the frame. If you aren't familiar with welding stainless steel, you really have to back purge it, and including the tacks preferably also. So the back purge setup I have on the table is just a smaller tank for 100% argon to feed argon through my heat sink. And I had these heat sinks made by a friend uh, to match the TurboSmart wastegate that I'm using and the Garrett Turbo housing that I'm using. 
So I've been enjoying using these. It really helps, you know, pull some of that heat out of the tube and protect the V-band flange from warping. But yeah, I just have it plumbed here. And then I'm using these uh, TIG Aesthetics purge plugs on uh, this little rack that I had made by Senka Send. So pretty neat little setup and it's worked really well. So here's a look at what I'm working with. I've got this piece that I'm working on here and I'm gonna try and follow the body line here with it. And so up there is probably where I'll end up cutting my extra tube, up, tube length off. But before I do that, I think uh, I'm gonna work on this 45 here with a little extra length on it and then put my bellow on it. And right now, a little bit hard to see on camera, but that's too long. This is too long. So I had this all lined up and kind of determined how much higher I want it to be, which is, you know, almost a two inches. I'm probably gonna err on the side of caution and just go like, one and three quarters just to be safe. And then that should set me up to keep my bellow just a bit higher and tucked up here, but should still leave, leave me enough room to uh, run this wastegate pipe next to it. we get the more plans change but I think we're finally there uh, I've got the wastegate pipe finished and it just needs to be welded onto the bottom here but I think I'm gonna wait on that until later uh, that just tucks in right down beside the downpipe and there's not enough room to do that flex coupling anywhere in here it's just all too tight so um, you know things change I'm gonna go underneath the car and show you kind of where we ended up Got a bit of wood in the way holding up my trans right now um, so i'm going to stop right here until i have a trans mount done but i've got the v-band flange welded on and i've got enough room around the bell housing and enough room for the wastegate pipe to go down and dump to the ground and then i'm gonna do like a small extension with uh, my coupler here um, that can flex and then it will transition around and i gotta sneak around a trans mount so that's where we ended up all right, so this is where I'm gonna call it. I don't have a trans mount yet, so I need to finish that before I can continue moving on. But overall, I'm really happy with the result. This is my very first stainless tube project and exhaust, so this is all new to me, but with some handy 3D printed tools and some good material, I got a pretty good result for my very first time, so I'm really happy with it. do it for this video i hope you enjoyed seeing my process in fabricating my very first downpipe and my kind of unconventional method but i'm really happy with the result for my very first time uh stick around for the next video where we're going to start diving into all of the intercooler piping and getting everything routed to our vibrant intercooler if you enjoyed this video like this type of content please like the video and subscribe and i hope to see you in the next one